Hey, Strategy Simplified. Welcome to the final episode of 2022. We're grateful that you've tuned in week in and week out this year, and we can't wait to bring you more fantastic content in 2023. Thank you for trusting us. Happy holidays from the entire team over here at Strategy Simplified and Management Consulted. For the final episode of this year, we're bringing you another edition of our case interview demo series. Now, these are mock cases conducted in front of a live LinkedIn audience, which we then publish to the podcast as well as our YouTube channel. Make sure to hop on our email list, link is in the show notes, to be notified about future live case sessions. Today's case features Trip Twyman, a management consultant, case coach, and former BCG consultant. This is a BCG style case featuring a hotel franchise looking to address stagnant revenue growth. Can our candidate crack the case? Keep listening to find out. We can jump in whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Awesome. So uh, prompt is pretty straightforward. You've been hired by the CEO of a hotel franchise. Yearly revenues have been stagnant at $600 million, while the competition has seen revenue growth. The CEO wants to know why this is and what can be done to correct it. What should we consider when advising the client on how to address this issue? Mm, got it, got it. Okay, so um, our client is a hotel franchise and their revenue has been stagnant for like $6 million um, while the competition has been increasing. So um, our client has come to us to find out why is this happening and how to turn around the uh, profit back, right? Exactly. I'll make sure it's it's 600 million and not 6 million, but yes. Oh yeah, 600 million. Okay, 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 got it. Um, so a couple of clarifying questions before I jump into the uh, framework. So um, where is the hotel uh, currently running from? Is it uh, like US or? Yeah, let's assume it's in the US. Okay. Okay. And um, do we have, uh, do we know how, how have been the revenue have been stagnant? Is it for the past years or? Yeah. yeah, so they had historically, they'd had like moderate growth in line with the industry. And then recently call it the last one to two years, revenue mm -hmm. growth stagnated. Okay, okay, got it. So one objective is to, you know, like bring back the uh, profitability. And um, is there anything else I should uh, take take a look at while uh, assessing their profitability or is it just about bringing better profitability? Uh, I think we're really, we're really just focused on revenue growth for now. Mm, okay. okay, 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 got it. Do you mind if I take some time to structure my talk first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. We'll be right back after this quick message. Hey, Strategy Simplified. Our 2023 consulting salary report is almost complete. If you've received a 2023 consulting offer or work in HR or PR at a firm, this is your call to submit your offer info and pay it forward to the next generation of consultants. The deadline to submit your offer info is December 31st. And in this episode's show notes, there is a secure anonymous link to do so. We'd love to include your perspective in the world's only consulting salary report. Again, the link to submit your offer info is at the link in the show notes. Okay. Okay. So in order to approach to the recommendation, I would like to have three approaches. So first of all, I would like to uh, assess the internal company uh, revenue. Uh, and see what's wrong there. And then second, I will be looking at the benchmark uh, competitors. You mentioned that uh, the competitors actually has a revenue increase over the past year. So I will uh, look into the competitors and benchmark our uh, company to that. And then the third will be like assessing um, what kind of uh, initiatives that we can do to uh, bring the revenue 
back and um, what are the impacts of this uh, initiative and um, basically our company's capability to do this initiative. Yeah. So um, on the revenue side, I would like to see about the, um, you know, like how many hotel rooms we have and how many uh, are, uh, how many percent of them are utilized. And then um, we're looking also on the chain period. So uh, are, are our uh, hotels customers uh, staying for like, you know, only one or two days or is it like uh, a week? Yeah, and then the third would be um, looking into the types of the customers. And um, the fourth thing would be um, looking at the additional revenue, for example, like food and beverage and probably um, event and something like that. And then, um, yeah, I will start to look at the uh, benchmark uh, competitors and look at the, uh, you know, like their uh, offerings and their uh, revenue breakdown. So probably um, we can find what's different from our companies and then the, yeah. And then I will try to see what initiative we can do from that. So if the framework makes sense to you, I would like to start um, with uh, looking at the customers of our client. Okay. Um, when you say customers, who mm -hmm. specifically are you talking about? Okay. So um, this is a hotel franchise, right? So I can um, mm -hmm. think of two. First of all, uh, probably would be like, you know, people going on traveling. So it's like travelers um, kind of segment. And then uh, the second would be people who stay in the hotel for like, business um mm -hmm. business trip so yeah okay i can think of two so in terms yeah. of like guests at the hotel you would think about like leisure and like business travel it sounds like yeah okay, yeah that makes sense um i don't have much information on the the guests of the hotel and okay I don't really we don't have any information on them specifically because we're in the franchisee model right so as a, as a franchise, the client licenses its brand to franchisees who get to own and operate the individual hotels. And in exchange, mm -hmm. they charge those franchisees a royalty charge equal to 10% of each hotel's revenues. Equals to 10% yeah. of hotel revenue. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little bit more information on the context overall, and we can talk about what we think is happening. So okay. in that franchise model, the client has 10 different franchise brands that it acquired over the years through you know, various acquisitions. And mm -hmm. each brand is an economy level hotel. So think like Motel 6 or like the cheaper hotels that you might stay at in an area. Hotels in the segment, because it's at the lower end of like the pricing segment, they do, they experience pretty tough price competition, but pricing has been stable um, in recent years. You mentioned the occupancy rate earlier. The client also sees like a stable occupancy rate at around 65%. And related to the number of rooms that you also mentioned, uh, the client has seen a decrease in the number of hotel properties. So they used to have 6,000 hotels that were franchising from them. Now they have 5,000 hotels. So taking all that information into account, what, what are some of your ideas about what could be happening here? Mm, yeah, so you mentioned that um, some of the hotels is, you know, like closing, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but however, the occupancy rate has been um, stagnant. So I guess that's why our revenue um, has been stagnant. And also um, the price is, um, we do not have the price increase, right? So um, my hypothesis is that um, 
our hotel is has a revenue stagnant because um, we are not increasing the price. And instead we are closing some of the uh, uh, hotels. That's why our revenue has been stagnant. Got it. Um, those are, help me understand this pricing point. I think the, I think the closing hotels make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have much. Yeah, just walk me through how those two things combine to lead to stagnated revenue. Mm. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, so uh, we have like 100 of hotels closing, right? And um, the, the occupancy rate was remain stagnant. Yeah. So it means that the customers coming to our hotel is not growing has been stagnant. That's why our, um, and our pricing has been also stagnant. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Um, in terms of the aggregate, um, since our hotels should be decreasing, um, then um, we should have seen, uh, you know, like revenue decreasing, but it's that um, it remains stagnant. So, yeah. Um, I think there must be another drivers here. So um, in case of that, um, yeah, well, so is where it like- more, Yeah, where would you want to look more into like of those different dynamics we discussed? Mm, so um, one thing I can think out is that um, probably the staying period of the customers are actually yeah. um, increasing. Yeah, so uh, previously we probably have customers staying for only one night and mm -hmm. now it's probably increasing. That's why our okay. revenue is stagnant. That makes sense. Um, you had mentioned the, like the decrease of properties mm -hmm. as, a, as a potential issue or like a driver of stagnating mm -hmm. revenue. Can you tell me more about what that might mean like what might be causing that mm, okay so um i can think there must be another reason why are we closing our uh, hotel property you know like probably um some of the markets there uh, are not uh, probably do well so um yeah i can think uh it's probably um well just to be just to be clear I don't know that I don't think the hotels are closing. What's happening is we used to have 6,000 hotels that were franchising our brand or the client's brand. Now there are 5,000 hotels that are franchising the client's brand, right? So it's not necessarily that the hotels have closed, but mm. that we've lost franchisees for whatever reason. Mm. Okay. So in that case, I can think. Um, the first thing I will think was it was about our brand. So um, probably um, we're not doing much of uh, branding, like uh, probably promotion or um, catching the right customer. And probably um, some of the customer has a bad reputation for our hotels. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it's probably based on our services. So um, probably. Um, we are not offering um, our the, the, the hotels like the offering they us. And third thing will be um, probably the royalty charges. So I can imagine that um, some of these hotels are moving on to the other uh, the other franchise hotel, um, which yeah. offer them like higher royalty fee. Yeah. Or the, do you think the do you think they would move for a higher or a lower royalty fee? Mm. If they are leaving our customers, mm. then um, they should be leaving for a royalty, a higher loyalty. Because if they are leaving for um, you know, like a lower royalty, then that doesn't yeah. make sense. Mm. Okay, I see what you're saying. So I guess like help me understand like who's 
in this model, who would be leaving? Because the way I'm seeing it, the franchisees would pay our client a royalty fee. Oh. Right. And so then I could, I could imagine them leaving for like, for a different royalty fee, but I don't know if they would leave because they wanted to pay a higher fee. Mm. If that's the case, then um, it should be uh, the competitors are offering lower of royalty charts. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So that's like a, that's almost like a pricing issue, right? Yeah. If, we, if our client was charging franchisees too much and royalty fees, then that could be pushing clients or franchisees to other franchisors, right? Like other brands. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's talk a little bit about the franchise model. So understanding the model, right? Where our client mm -hmm. is the franchisor and all these franchisees license our brand mm -hmm. from us and pay us a royalty fee in exchange for presumably that brand plus other support. Can we talk about what other benefits are likely part of being a franchisee? Like what, what can our client offer to the franchisees? Mm. Yeah, got it. Um, so in terms of the franchise is um, about the business model. So is it like uh, the management, do we provide it to the uh, customers or is it like you can manage your own uh, franchise? Because um, in Indonesia, there's two different types of franchise. So, yeah. Oh, what are the two different types? Yeah. So the first type will be um, we have a uh, buy their license and they will provide, you know, all the manpower. And um, that's why it's more standardized and it will be a higher fee for that. Yeah. And the second types will be um, you just buy our brand and then you can manage it on your own. Yeah. yeah. So, so I agree. Those are, those are definitely two options. I think we probably, the client is using more of the second option. Mm. So the hotels are still owned and operated by the franchisees, mm -hmm. but the client does provide them with various kind of types of support or rather the client could, right? Like as a franchisee, what types of support would you be looking for from a franchise? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, got it. So um, in terms of the franchise, um, the first thing um, will be you know, like the, uh, the, I imagine that would be um, like some kind of SOP. Um, so standard operational procedure to how, how to manage the hotels. And um, that's the first thing. So um, the second thing will be uh, the tools. So probably um, they have this kind of, you know, like, uh, financial modeling or some kind of that and then um, the the uh, the third uh, will be selling with their brand so um, this could be uh, two things I think so first of all with uh, if the brand was uh, highly known so uh, it will be easier for uh, new joiners to came um, with our client brand. And um, the second thing will be, um, it's a cheaper option mm -hmm. than to, uh, you know, build your own brand from scratch. And um, probably um, our client has already have some land in mind. So uh, uh, the, the franchisees can just by the, the, the uh, hotels and start operating there. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, I think you're right. And like on that SOP point, I think that's probably an area that's worth looking into mm. more closely. Um, we, know, we know that the client's revenue per available room night which is a metric they use to evaluate the business is around 80% of that of its largest competitors. Revenue per available room night 
to define it is just total like firm revenue divided by total available rooms. Total available sorry. rooms. So it's like total revenue divided by total hotel rooms available. Mm, okay, okay. Each hotel in our clients like franchisee ecosystem has 100 rooms that are available for booking 300 days a year. And our current revenue per room night is $40. So thinking about this, if the franchisee or if the franchisor, a client, were able to like improve the SOP they're giving to franchisees, what's the potential revenue upside for them? Mm. Okay. Okay. Um Okay, so um yeah, so you mentioned that um we mm -hmm. have uh okay, so each hotel has um one hundred rooms. So um, yeah, I can uh the first thing, the first my approach is to find out um the 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 how many revenue that we will generate from this. Yeah. And then um, the second would be, um, yeah, so we have this 80% uh, number. And uh, I think uh, we can get the total revenue by, um, you know, like, uh, Calculating the total available rooms um, times it by 80%. So that would be my approach. Help me understand that. So you want to take the total available rooms today mm -hmm. and times it by 80%. Mm -hmm. And what will that get us? Um, the total revenue. Mm, okay. So I think we want to calculate the revenue upside, right? So mm. trying to get from where our client is today to say if they were able to increase revenue per available room night so that it's on yeah. par with their leading competitors, how much would total revenue increase? Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the number of 80% is... Uh, compared to our competitors, right? Yeah, so that means like, if we took like the competitor's revenue times 80%, that would give mm. us our revenue today per room. Day. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so um, I can calculate the total revenue we got today, which is um, calculating the each hotels, uh, uh, how many rooms we have, and then times it with um, the the days per year, and also the occupancy rate. So I will uh, try to keep it simple and do it uh, per one hotel basis instead of the aggregate. So um, in terms of that, we can get the total revenue uh, now as. 165%, so. Okay. Yeah, so we are looking uh, the revenue per hotel for uh, 19 and five, Nineteen thousand and five hundred uh, dollar per year. Nineteen thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah, nine nineteen thousand and five hundred dollars. Okay, and walk me through. You said you did that by taking the rooms times the number of nights times the occupancy rate. Yeah. 
oh yeah um so i need to calculate it with the uh actually the price so um that was for 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 forty yeah, dollar right forty dollars why don't we do this why don't we because i think like that's going to give us like a really specific number let's think about it more broadly if we assume that the hotels are full um because i think what we can do is we can look at like how how can we help our franchisees optimize like mm. pricing per se um so looking at that if we take our total number of rooms available mm -hmm. like the total rooms in the system and multiply that by the 40 dollars per night what revenue projection will we get or what would our term what would our current revenue be and then for the upside if we calculate the difference between our revenue per room night today and our revenue per room night when we're on par with benchmarks. Mm -hmm. We can multiply that by the number of rooms in the system to again figure out what's the potential upside for the client. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. So yeah, so each hotel uh have like one hundred mm -hmm. rooms. And we have uh, currently looking at 550 hotels as we are having right now. So, um, and times it with the price, which is uh, $40. So I would get the number of. Yeah, so I just, just to run those numbers back, right? We have a hundred rooms, right? Mm -hmm. We have 5,000 hotels. Mm, 5,000 hotels. Oh. We have 300 nights available per room. Yeah, and times it with the price. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, So we are looking at um, six billion here mm -hmm. of revenue, awesome. and yeah, times it with. Uh, so we only currently only uh, have eighty percent of our competitors. So that means our um, competitors would have the revenue of. Um, so our competitor would have the revenue of 7.5 billion. Okay, that makes sense. So then the upside for our client in terms of hotel revenue. That would be um, 1.5 billion increase. So um, yeah. it would be 25%. Awesome, that makes sense. And then thinking about that upside for the franchisers specifically, right? Because they don't get all that revenue. What would their upside be? Um, I think, uh, we can do that by, um, either, uh, generating more revenue. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, it could be, um, that we are, uh, selling more franchise to, uh, you know, number of hotels right there, or, um, probably we can do like value added services like um we can offer them uh the manpower for like uh additional yeah additional uh rev uh additional costs for them and then the third thing um will be cutting our royalty charge yeah well i guess okay so like tell me yeah tell me about the royalty charge because we know we charge a 10 percent royalty fee right yeah so if we if we can help our hotels increase revenue by 1.5 billion mm -hmm. yeah the, yeah yeah um so in terms of royalty charts um my hypothesis is that um the, the the current uh living hotels of uh 100s they are uh probably living to our competitors so um i would like to see the benchmark for the royalty charts if that makes sense and see if 
um, if we charge a lower royalty charge, will it attract, you know, like more customers to uh, buy our franchise and probably um, that could be generating more revenue to us. That makes sense. Um, I actually, so we don't actually have data on competitors' royalty charges, but mm -hmm. using the information we've had and like the analysis that we've worked through already, can you help me summarize our work and what you would recommend to the client? Okay, got it. Um, can I have 20 seconds? Yeah, go ahead. We'll be right back after this quick break. Are you frustrated with the status quo? Join the owner class. The owner class is a three month mentorship program led by Jenny Ray. Over six one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and three group trainings, you'll walk together to change the way you make big decisions around your career, your finances, and your relationships. The program kicks off in January and is limited to just 12 seats. If you're ready to ditch the nine to five and build the life and career you want, join the owner class today. Click the link in the show notes to learn more and join. Okay, so yeah, so my recommendation for our client is to, you know, uh, probably do some uh, promotion to, um, in order to create a stronger brand for us. And uh, this is based on three reasons. So first of all, is that uh, we are seeing a lot of the our customer leaving us. So um, it could be of uh, one of two reasons. So they could probably leaving for uh, competitors or probably um, they are just closing the hotels because the market are down. So um, the second would be um, we we uh, we haven't do too much work on the revenue here. So um, the second reason would be the 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 our revenue generated is only eighty percent from our competitors, and um, that means there are still rooms to grow from here. And in terms of risk, we need to, you know, like uh, do some kind of due diligence to find out um, what initiatives we can do to uh, bring more revenue for our uh, customers and then um, see what are the operational risks and um, our capabilities for that. And for the next step, I think um, we can try to uh, evaluate our uh, uh, services that we can uh, give for like value added for our customers. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How did that feel? Um, I feel like uh, this is a fucked up case. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you feel like that? Because um, I don't think uh, I got the, to the root issue here. Okay. And um, yeah. What do you think the root issue was? Um, I think the root issue was that uh, we have something, we have the brand problem, right? What do you mean so, by the brand problem? Yeah, like tell me about that. Mm, yeah, so I think uh, the, the, the main reason that uh, our the customers are leaving our client is because the brand is not strong enough. So there must be um, some kind of new competitors or uh, some yeah. kind of brand. Yeah, that's okay. more. What is it that makes you feel like the brand isn't strong enough? Because the market is growing, but um, instead we are, uh, the customers are leaving our client, right? Okay, so market is growing. One, I guess like the core question then is like, when you say customers are leaving, mm -hmm. are you talking about like people staying at the hotels or are you talking no. about franchisees? No, I'm talking about the franchises. Okay, so then I think it's like, a, what are the reasons that a franchisee would leave, right? Because if the market is growing, 
I'm trying to like, let's talk about why that might happen plausibly. Mm. So, yeah. So first thing I can think of is uh, probably about the brand. So, mm. yeah, um, I think our brand has had a, probably a bad reputation over the market. And then uh, the second thing would be uh, the services. So probably we're not giving them like the full package are probably kind of service that they want. And um, yeah, probably it's for the pricing or yeah. probably the location. So my read on it was mm -hmm. a little bit different because I didn't really see anything that, that said like, oh, it's a branding problem. And the reason mm -hmm. I didn't see that in part these are all like economy level hotels. So we're already playing in the lower end of the market where brand is not really a differentiator in terms of guests mm -hmm. coming to stay at the hotel. Um, if I think about why a franchisee would stay versus leave, they're probably, to be honest, focused on profit, right? They wanna make as much money as possible. And so, if franchisees are leaving, to me, this is a signal that there's, they're not making as much money as they could under our brand, but they feel like under another one, maybe they would. But we know that branding isn't going to change how much, you know, how many people are staying at the hotel because it's all pretty competitive. So then I think it's like, we've got, it's got to be something else. And once we learn that there's, of the different services that we could offer to franchisees, right? Like maybe they're leaving because another franchiser will support them better, mm. right? They might be going to franchisors that will, like you pointed out, have like a more robust SOP and actually help them accelerate their business, right? Or like manage it in a way that the business will run more effectively. And we have a little bit of data that supports that because we know that revenue per room night for us is about 80% mm. of what it is for competitors, right? And what that tells me is that if I'm a franchisee, I could go, I could throw away the, this client's brand. I can put on, you know, the shirt for another hotel chain and my revenue is going to go up by 25%. Right. Just just because I I'm getting some kind of support that I'm not getting here. So I think that leads me to believe that. And you, you mentioned this a little bit in terms of like how what services can we offer to franchisees? Mm. But like that seems to be. More of the like the root cause is this this topic of how do we make sure that revenue per room night is as high as possible and like what is what's impacting revenue per room night? That's like a really good question because it's not entirely clear. Um, so I think there's a little bit of, I think there's a little bit of that, but I, don't, I also don't think it was like the worst case. Let's talk about like, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go chronologically, but let's talk about like some feedback, cool? Cool. Love it. Okay, so I thought your framework um, in the, I was confused at times because it felt like you missed up and this might have just been the wording but you were using profitability and revenue mm -hmm. interchangeably and i think they're they're distinct topics yeah. so precision is precision of language is going to matter a bit um especially because if we're thinking about how to improve revenue that's a very different question than like thinking about how to improve profitability and we need to, ultimately, we may need to do both. But in this case, what we're focused on is revenue. So let's like make sure we keep the, keep the framework and the discussion of the framework focused on revenue. When you, when we first started off, I think you did a good job like reframing the question and saying like, okay, here's what we're after. I would just make sure, and I think this will help with the like revenue versus profitability thing. You really want to highlight the core business problem that we're trying to address. So in this case, the core problem is that revenue has stagnated and we want to figure out what's happening and start growing it again, 
Right. And so you did, you played back the prompt like concisely and clearly to me, <clears throat> but you didn't emphasize like, hey, this is really what we're solving. Right. And it's going to be mm -hmm. important in the consulting. I'm sure you see this at BCG already. Yeah. People will point out like, you know, in discussions or whatever, people will point out, okay, this is really the question, right? Like, and that's what you can do even when you're reframing the question at the beginning of the case. I liked your framework. I think the, I think a couple things stood out to me. Um, you're like internal competitors, and then I call it growth levers. Um, the, so I would challenge you to say like, how Nisi is this? One thing that I'm missing from this framework is anything about like customers. So like, what do, what do the actual guests at the hotels care about? What are they thinking? And also because it's a franchiser, you have this additional layer of like, how do we treat the franchisees? And is there anything in the franchisee experience that could be impacting this? On communicating the framework, I have two pieces of feedback specifically. One is, this is more like stylistic, but as you were going, as you were walking through your buckets, it didn't, I couldn't feel you take a pause between buckets, which made it a little bit more challenging for me as, you know, the interviewer to follow along. And to hear, you know, when were you switching from internal like revenue stuff to like competitive benchmarks to like initiatives that you could run to like kickstart growth? Even just a little pause between each section will help your interviewer slash audience follow along more easily. And then the, that will make everything you're saying come across more clearly because it like literally add like some physical structure in terms of like how things are coming out, but that vocal structure will then create like conceptual structure for them too. Got Second it, got it. Is on the, within the framework, I would love to hear you articulate clear hypotheses for each of the things that you wanna look into. So I heard things like, oh, we wanna look at like rooms and utilization and the length of stay and like potentially other revenues like that we can get from the business. But what I didn't hear is explicitly why these things would help answer the question. And that's, that's something that I think you'll be able to do because I know that you had, like I could tell you had the answers or like you had the hypotheses, you just need to say them, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, I want to look at utilization because it could be that, you know, we'd seen increasing utilization and now it stopped or even went down and that's impacting revenue. Or maybe this like other revenues bucket, which is probably like pretty insignificant, but like as an example, what if I'd also like to look at like other revenues like snacks and beverages and the spa or whatever, because if we've seen a change in these revenues, maybe that's impacting the business overall. Right now, I'll call out. Those are on two very different levels, right? Occupancy is going to be a core driver of a hotel's revenue, right? Because most of a hotel's revenue is going to come from room nights, snacks and stuff. Not going to be part of the core revenue, right? So if if our client is focused on oh revenue stagnated, I don't know that I'm going to highlight the other revenues like and snacks as much as I'll highlight things like. How many rooms or room nights are we offering? What's our occupancy rate? How long are people staying? Mm. Everything happened with our pricing recently. Have we been offering too many promotions? Um, or are like, do we have a loyalty program and people are like using too many redemption nights like after the pandemic and now they're like, we're not actually charging anyone mm -hmm. to stay at the hotel. Like whatever it is, right? Like I want to hear clear hypotheses in your framework. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Cool. Any Don't questions on framework before we move on? Mm, yeah. So you mentioned that uh, I should have clear hypothesis for each mm -hmm. uh, bucket, like sub bucket, right? Yeah. So uh, wouldn't it be too long for me to explain to the interviewers? Depending on how you do it. Because your hypotheses don't need, 
you don't need so one thing i really liked is that you repeatedly would call out what your hypothesis was what i want to see is you can have a shorter form hypothesis right so you can basically say okay i'd like to look at revenue and within revenue i'd like to look at the number of rooms because it's possible that the number of rooms went down and it's causing having this impact right that's like a short version of a hypothesis and then we can move mm -hmm. on i don't need like 20 hypotheses but it would be i would appreciate having at least call it three that come out as you're giving your framework does that make sense yeah makes sense makes sense cool. okay um let's move on to other parts of the case i think like one thing that I really appreciated when we started getting into our qualitative discussion about like the franchisees was that you were able to bring your own experience in terms of, hey, here's how franchisees typically work. I would lean on that. So instead of like stylistic, you could ask, you could say, hey, how do franchises work in the US? Mm. I'm not really sure. I don't live there. That's fine. Um, the other thing you can do, and to be clear, I would encourage that if you're ever faced with like, a case question about a new industry, right? If you're if you're asked to, if you're given a case about an industry that you're not familiar with, don't pretend like you're familiar with it. Just ask, like, hey, just so I'm just so I can figure out which way is up. Is it true that this impacts this in this way, or like this is the nature of the relationship between these parties, right? You can you can suss out how an industry functions, and then use that information to figure out the best way to drive value. Uh, gotcha. So that's that. Lean on your experience. You had the answer. You knew how franchisees work. So just lean. you say, hey, look. Usually franchisees work like in this way or this way. It sounds like from the prompt, because the hotels are still owned and operated by the franchisees, it's more like the second model that I pointed out. In which case, it's going to be really important for our client to deliver value to the franchisees. Mm. Checks out. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so talking about the, like the benefits of the franchisees is helpful. And that I think is like the core area where during the case, we sort of, we almost lost the thread because we started thinking about like other things beyond like, okay, what can our, what are franchisees expecting? And then how can our client control that? Um, thinking about the math, the, the biggest feedback I'll give you on the math when the math is strict. So I have a three-step process for math. This is, I'm convinced I need to patent it because I love it. So step one, we need to confirm the objective. This is where in the math, we're gonna, you and me are gonna get on the same page about what are we trying to calculate, right? In this case, I wanted to know what's the revenue upside, right? Mm. So you'd say, okay, we're gonna calculate the revenue upside, which is the difference between what we're making today and what we could be making if we were like performing at the level of our competitors. And then I would click down, right? So then we'd say, okay, cool. That's what we're going after. Now you think a little bit about how to do it, which leads me to step two of my patented math approach, confirm the approach. This is where you say, okay, Trip, the way I'm gonna calculate the revenue upside is by looking at this, this, and this, and multiplying or like adding them whatever it is, right? Lay out the equation for me. Don't put numbers in it. Just confirm the equation. You did this. You did this really well. Like you actually, there was a point where you were like, okay, so like I'm going to take this times this times this. And I was like, chef kiss. But what we needed to see was that equation in the context of the broader objective. I think because we had really gotten clear on what we were trying to calculate, we went in some circles with the math. Mm. Whereas if we had started with like, okay, here's the North Star and here's how to break it down and here's how to calculate each piece of it, then we would have had that structure to guide us and could have just like marched through it. Got Step it. three in my math approach, do the math. That's the last part. Once you've laid out the equation and we're on the same page about it, you can say, okay, I'm going to go, you know, calculate this, divide that, multiply this, and then share out interim insights as you go so that we're on the same page and I, we know that it's moving in the right direction does that make sense yeah that makes sense um, your math was good though like once we got to like the right approach and like figuring out like exactly what we wanted to calculate like the numbers were great and so i think that's where we want to focus is just making sure that we can ground ourselves 
or orient ourselves appropriately when we're doing the mass. Um, that was it, honestly. Other than that, like, I would just say stay focused toward the end. Um, we were like, we had, we had it on like the franchisee SOP thing. And then there was like this last minute kind of curveball where you started talking about like royalty benchmarks. Um, mm. And so I would encourage you, like, if you can tell the case is going in one direction, then don't try and yank it in another direction. Um, because mm. the whole point is to, you know, work through this funnel where we start very broad and then we get more and more specific until we like pinpoint the answer and what to do about it. Mm. So okay. Sweet. Yeah, that makes sense. Overall, though, good job. Like, I think <laughs> I, hopefully this was this was like an opportunity to learn some things. I know I giving this feedback, it was helpful for me to identify like specifically what could we change here. So we're getting better. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Strategy Simplified one final time in 2022. A happy New Year. Uh, we can't wait to bring you more great content in the new year. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next year.